give our God some praise in this place. Amen. If you believe that you can receive this, and God can work it out today, you ought to give him praise. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to participate in our giving. Our blessings are coming, and our deacons are coming. Get ready, and let's get back to God that which he has blessed us with. Ladies and gentlemen, in our social media platform, whether it be YouTube or our Facebook audience, you can give by way of mail, which is by way of 1885 East 79th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103, or you can give by way of calling our church hotline, having our secretary to get in touch with one of our officers, and we'll be so glad as to assist you in picking your tithes and offering up. If you're in this place, you know that God's been good to you. Let's be good back to God. Amen. God bless. Cheerful giver. Amen. Come on. Good morning. Go I just wanted to touch the basis on a couple of things with you this morning. Uh, we did conclude our um, uh, fundraiser with um, Thank you, hundred X. Uh, so not always well we want to do, but we've done a lot this year. So I just appreciate all that we have done. Um, we learned from the experience, so we know what to do the next time to better prepare. Uh, we, the last report I saw, we got a little over two hundred dollars, but that's two hundred dollars we didn't have. So praise the Lord for that. But at least now we have a better idea of what to do in preparation for it. I will set up some things uh, in advance to help you along with navigating your way through. It is pretty easy, but I think we need some sessions where we can just sit down with you and uh, just show you how once you see it, you go, oh my gosh, that was so easy. Um, all right, uh, we have past anniversary coming up in August. Um, there's a, a fundraiser, uh, Tammy Drive, that's going to run this, um, this uh, Regina. Regina is taking care of and the best view at the church. Um, so please, if you uh, don't uh, eat candy, uh, maybe you can buy some for somebody else. I'll eat it. Uh, <laughs> the morning is soon. The morning is soon. Yeah, okay, it's a little bit better. Our summer account is all and it's running and it's doing great. It is the, it's a wonderful experience. You know, if we want our young people to be young people of tomorrow, we have to support them. Yeah, they run around, yeah, they get on my nerve, yeah, they work on my nerve, but it's a wonderful experience at the end of the day. So next week, especially next Saturday, it's our showcase where the students, they, they put on a performance of everything they learned in the two weeks. And believe it or not, they're not doing great jobs. Some are playing already, some are, are moving, some are acting. It's a wonderful experience. This is maybe because of you, you, and you. Please, next Saturday, come out. It's at two o'clock. It's not a long, it's about an hour and 15 minutes program. But come out and support our young people. If we don't show them support, Nobody. then Nobody. Right, we even can't support them here or we can't wait to be hearing about them in the news. So let's come out and support our young people. And if you really interested in what they're doing, come out a little bit. Come out a little bit and see. And you would be amazed. We have them from, I think, five to 16 years old. So, you know, that's a big gap. So come out and support our young people. They're yours, yours, and mine. Thank you. Yeah. Might as well mention that we have a visiting camp coming with us this week. Uh, that's going to, their camp is a little different than ours. Ours is performance arts too. So they wanted to take a peek and experience what we do here. So we welcome them to come on Tuesday. Um, we've had conversations with other camps that are interested in what we're doing. So we have a lot of good things going on here. Uh, I highly encourage you to come down, spend some time with those kids, the young people. They are a joy, a treat. 
Um, some of the conversations that you have to be wondering how old are they really? Uh, some of the wrong, wrong conversations. I'm like, oh my, how old are you? But they enjoy you. They enjoy you speaking with them. They, they will give you tons of hugs. Um, and they're just really lovely. We have a kiss from my daycare that are coming down. And um, they're very memorable and just lovely. So come, spend a little time with them, get to know them, and please come out and support the, the Saturday uh, showcase.
They are in a storm because they have been commanded by the Lord to cross the sea of Galilee to go over to the other side. These brothers are in the will of God, and yet they are struggling against the storm. Try as they might, it appears that they just cannot make any headway. The winds and the waves are getting the best of them. And I want to know this morning, have you ever found yourselves in the midst of a storm? Have you ever been there where it seems as if it ain't one thing, it's another? It seems just like you can't make any headway. There have been different storms, ladies and gentlemen, but ain't nothing like the storms of life. Can I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, child of God that's in this place this morning, I'm glad to report that troubles don't last always. Hebrews 12 and 11 teaches us these words. He says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those that have been trained by it. Well. Let's look at this storm with the disciples if you can. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first of nature miracles done by this man, Jesus. Can I share with you? This is the first nature storm that has been recorded in the Gospels. Can I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, that a nature storm is different than a healing miracle. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. A nature miracle is different than a resurrection or an exorcism because it deals with Jesus showing his authority over the forces of nature or what we call mother nature. Can I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, this text runs parallel to a book called Jonah. Jonah as we all know, fell asleep on the ship. Jesus falls asleep on a ship. Jonah fell asleep and the mariners got scared. Jesus fell asleep on the ship and the disciples freaked out and got scared. But that's where the similarities end, ladies and gentlemen, because Jonah was in a storm because of disobedience, and the disciples are in a storm because of obedience. It teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, in this place that you can be in the will of God and still run into a storm. Let's look at the suddenness of this storm. But also, let's look at the circumference of the sea. The Sea of Galilee, ladies and gentlemen, is 700 feet below sea level. It's placed in a basin surrounded by mountains and hills. Mount Hermon gives off cool air. The Sea of Galilee gives off steaming hot air. And when the two winds clash, it can make the sea calm one minute and violent in another minute. Can I tell you? Yeah. That's exactly how I feel. One minute is cool, and the next, all hell is breaking loose. Phone call can change your life forever. A doctor's visit can break your spirit. Wish I had help in this house. An accident can empty your bank account. Wish I had help in here. But, but I want to let you know this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that whatever you're facing, God is still in control. 
in, in fact, can you encourage that sleeping neighbor that ain't said amen yet and tell him that God is still in control? We share with the ladies and gentlemen yes, that storms come in our lives for a purpose. I shared this with my cousin on last night. There are two purposes behind the storm. To blow stuff in your life and sometimes to blow some stuff out of your life. The next revelation that we get from a storm, says Brad, is this. Storms come to reveal who God is. But then storms come to refine the, uh -huh. the believer. Y'all yeah. still miss it. Yeah. Uh, 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 storms reveal the sovereignty of God. But, if you believe. but the storm also refines the saint of God. Yeah. In essence, watch this. It shows how strong God is, but it also shows how weak you are. I I had help in this house. Ladies and gentlemen, in this place, that's the power of the storm. But let's look at the problem in the storm. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can I share with you, the problem was not in the Sea of Galilee. But the problem, Deacon Broadnax, was in the hearts of the disciples. Huh. They doubted his goodness by saying, Carest thou not that we perish? Huh. They were busy looking at the situation and not looking at the saint. They were focused on the storm instead of looking at the sovereign one. Not only did they doubt his goodness, but they doubted his grace. Here it is. They said, tell us thou not that we perish. Jesus did not save you to abandon you. When the storms of life come your way, God will be with you through it all. They doubted his goodness, they doubted his grace, but they also doubted his guarantee. I read it just a few minutes ago. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Can I tell you, if Jesus said we're going over, then it means that we're not going under. Here it is. Here it is. Y'all don't feel like this morning. I'm going to let you go with me. Can, can I tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen, that if Jesus says that we're going over, then it means that we're not going on yet. So Jesus asks, why are y'all so fearful? Well, why are y'all in that room? Well, well, why are you come waking me up? I told you I'm the sovereign one. Look at my guarantee. We're going to the other side. That's right. I need to talk to some of y'all stupid, faithless people in this place this morning that's wondering how you're going to get out of your situation. If Jesus says, let's go over, you ain't got to worry about going under. Three part of a giant for the sickness you Ladies and gentlemen, you need to learn how to have faith in a powerful side. serve of God if I didn't have no faith in I had help in this place. Why keep coming to church Sunday after Sunday if you're not going to have faith in Jesus? Here it is. I'm sorry. Here it is, y'all. Hey, church. Storms are a form of spiritual development. In essence, if you experience a storm, God might be trying to grow you up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. Here it is, here it is. Somebody catch this. Storms produce praise. Storms make you 
shout when you come to church on Sunday. And I want to know this morning is if anybody that's in this place that has been through a storm, but you made it to the other side and you're able to encourage somebody and tell them God is able. Oh, brothers and sisters. Brother Mark, that's the power and the problem of the storm. But let's not hold you too long, DK. Let's look at the purpose yeah. in the storm. Yeah. Jesus right. is asleep in a hurricane. Uh, come on in here. Right. Come on in here. <laughs> let me, let me, let me yeah. this. Jesus is asleep in the midst of a raging storm. Here it is. If you don't look like me, when the storm comes to town, Grandma going to say something like this. Cut the TV down. Cut the lights off. Cover the mirror. Because God was doing his business. I had some help in this house. And then if you got too quiet, too, too, too noisy, she would say, shut Let's look, at, let's look at the purpose of the storm. Yeah. This is the only time in the Gospels, catch this, y'all, where they mention that Jesus is sleeping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all, yeah. really yeah. this time. Yeah. This is the only time in all of the Gospels where you find that they mention Jesus <laughs> is sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, us, he never sleeps. Come on, come on. Nor slumps. Where you going? Come on. Why is Jesus sleeping in a horrific storm? Come on, ask me about it. Here it is. It's because peaceful sleep in a storm indicates trust in God. Hey, Michelle, catch the show. The reason Jesus really woke 
woke up. It's not because they woke him up. Glenn, the reason that Jesus wakes up is because when they ask this question, that question. they question his character. Here it is. Come on. He woke Jesus up. <clears throat> Jesus was sleeping through the storm. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't sleep once he heard his child crying. Come on, man. Come on. Still sleeping. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus is sleeping a storm. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't sleep once he heard their cry. Yes, Lord. <sighs> I want to submit to Diane Jackson. Yes, uh, he may not. Come around when we want it. I want to submit, Brother, brother Ruben. He might seem sleep during the storm, but if you holler and cry loud, man, man, Jesus. I want to submit that he'll show up and show up. Cars that we brought out of dinner. 
And so he got to the house, but discovered, being brought to that, that he left his keys in his desk at the church. We went and rang the doorbell, but his daughter didn't answer. He knocked on the door and the window, and his daughter still didn't answer. He saw a stick in the yard. He threw it up at the top window, thinking that that would get her attention, but she still didn't answer. But suddenly, he decided to go across the street and call the house. So the hell, he let the phone ring, he said, 20 times. There was no answer. So of course, ladies and gentlemen, he began to get scared and worried as he's running across the street from the neighbor's house after not getting an answer for 22 rings. As I'm standing there in the yard waiting on him to cross the street to come back to me, a light pops up. And there was movement in the house as he came back. He approached the porch, ladies and gentlemen. His daughter opened the door with the baby in her arms. And of course, he scared to death. He said, why didn't you answer the door? What you got going on in there? She said, Dad, I didn't hear you. He said, I called. He said, I knocked on the door. I threw a stick at the window. What's going on in here? Who you got in my house? She said, Dad, I didn't hear you. He said, the partner said, he saw a light pop on and he saw you run upstairs. <laughs> she said, Dad, I told you I didn't hear you. He said, well, why did you run upstairs? She said, I heard my child cry. Mm. 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 Y'all miss this, y'all slow down. Saturday, don't forget, 2 o'clock, 
2 o'clock on Saturday. There's going to be a grand event here. Every year this event gets greater. I've been here every time, and these children are real like man. They are shocking. And so what we want to do, we want to try to keep this program going. I talked to Glenn on some occasions about this. Our church is getting older and we need life. Amen? Amen. And so what we're going to try to do is to emulate um, another program that I saw. And that is that I believe that we have a daycare next door for a reason. Which means that if they can come to a summer camp, they can come to church on Sunday. <laughs> and so what we want to do is maybe one Sunday out of everyone, we want to try to put those kids back in Gethsemane on a showcase or something like that where they're going to all here in Sunday morning service. Amen. Amen. And so we want to have the understand that if the kids come, then the parents will come. That's another form of evangelism. Amen. How do they know that? Our pupils are empty for a reason because somebody ain't talking to somebody. Amen. And so let us encourage uh, these young people on Saturday. Encourage them to come back. Encourage their parents to come back so they see what great things we have here going on at the Assembly Church. Let's give uh, our dean and Sister B and Brother Maestro, great God bless you, and their kids and staff for keeping these kids safe and doing what they do. We commend you guys. I want to thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, and so I'll be down here this week. I was absent last week. I came down on Monday, but I was absent the rest of the week. And so I'll be down here several days this week, and then I'll be back out here on Saturday. Amen. So that we can encourage our young people in the Lord. Amen. Let's get ready to go home so y'all can get some rest. Amen. Thank you.